Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Joseph Gettler. I'm Team Boom's North American Sales Director. Before we start the presentation, we just want to share with you a little info about Team Boom. Team Boom is a global leader in software animation solutions. Our patented vector technology is found in over 122 countries and growing. We have many great resources online at your disposal. These include Jobs Corner, giving you access to our global corporate network, our Experts Corner, tips and tricks, and also our showcase, which allows you to share your animation with over 130,000 unique visitors a month. Toon Boom is an award-winning company with many prestigious awards for our range of software. We are located at booth B24, so please come and join us to see our technology and learn more. So, without further ado, Toon Boom is proud to present Heather Kenyon, Vice President of Project Development and Sales from Stars Animation, sharing today her experience on how to create a pitch Bible. Please give Heather a warm welcome. Yay, thanks. Hello, hello. Um, before I get started, I just want to kind of see a show of hands so I know who I'm talking to. So how many of you are students? OK, awesome. How many of you are working professionals? OK, good. Wow, it's like 50-50. And um, how many of you have your own ideas that you want to go out and pitch? All of you. OK, awesome. <laughs> awesome. OK, good. So I'm going to lead you through the steps of what you need to do to put together a successful pitch bible. Um, for those of you that don't know, I, um, I went to USC film school. I went from there to uh, Hanna-Barbera cartoons where um, I worked when, when Fred Seibert was president there and we did all like Powerpuff and Dexter and Johnny Bravo and all of those. And then um, I left there and went to awn.com and then went back to uh, Turner working at Cartoon Network where I was head of development. Um, and then I left there and uh, did a year kind of trip around the world consulting and freelancing in Brazil. Geraldo's here from Brazil, hello. So <laughs> I, um, I consulted down in Brazil and China and that was a ton of fun. Uh, and then I started at STARS about a year and a half, almost two years ago now. So, and in all that time, um, I probably see hundreds of pitch Bibles a year. So this is kind of what I've derived works. So um, if I, um, I have like 40 some minutes, I think, to talk. So if you have questions, go ahead, just like, we'll make it a conversation because that'll, that'll help make it easier. If you ask me like, what's the future of media or something, we'll shelve that for a bit later. <laughs> but if it's like, you know, what's kid screen or what do you do at MIPCOM or whatever, just we'll, we'll talk. Okay, so how to create a pitch Bible, yay. Before you start, so these are kind of four things to, to think about as you're developing your ideas, right? So think about the competition. So is this great um, project that you're beginning to think about and design and, and write and draw, is there something on TV that's really similar? For instance, is it you know, a, a bunch of campers in some crazy camp? somebody along the line is gonna say, you know, that sounds a lot like Camp Laszlo. So what's your answer? Is it like Camp Laszlo? Why isn't it like Camp Laszlo? So really do your research, find out what other shows are out there that maybe you're gonna be compared to and you need to have a good answer why you're not that. So don't, don't get stumped. Um, cause you know, the people buying the shows are going to be like, why, why do I need to buy this show? It's already been made, right? Um, think about sales outlets. Sometimes I see the best ideas, just really, really great, cool ideas, but you're kind of like, where are you going to sell this to? It's, is it a, is it a spike show? Can you see it on spike? Can you see it on comedy central? Can you see it on MTV? Can you see it on Disney Channel, on XD, or Nickelodeon? So you have to kind of know the difference between those networks and know where you can, where you're going to be able to sell. You know, like frequently we get pitches. Um, um, I'm getting more feature pitches now, but um, 
you know, they're really niche, like um, either horror or kind of like an animated movie that would be really um, appealing for 18 to 34 year old males. Like that's a really hard demographic to go out and sell. So really don't kind of handicap yourself to start. Um, really make sure that the project you're developing, it has a home. You can, you can kind of hone it to where you think you're going to be able to sell it and make an attractive package for where you want to go with it. So think about that. Um, think about your audience. So is it, you know, if it's for kids, is it, um, if it's something for kids, like, okay, are you designing or thinking about your show that stars two kind of middle-aged slackers that live in a trailer park? Like, how does that relate to kids? It doesn't. So think about your audience. Like if you're wanting to design something, create a show for kids, what is going on in kids' lives today? Like does your kid have a paper, a paper route? Like most kids today, they have no clue what a paper route is, right? They have, they have no clue. So think, really think about your audience. What are they into? Where are they in their lives? What's gonna relate to them? and kind of make sure that you target that. Um, and the other thing is get feedback. Don't be like so, oops, sorry, I have a mic on. Don't be so closed that you're not gonna talk to people, not everybody and their brother, but you know, you have your friends, you have the people that you know. Um, just share with them. What do they like about your idea? What do they think is interesting? What do they not like? What doesn't make sense to them when you kind of start to discuss your ideas and pitch it? Because that's going to help you hone your idea quicker. Um, this past MIPCOM, I had two uh, television ideas that we took out really, really hard to all the networks. And I kind of started soft pitching the ideas in summer to kind of people I knew that could be co-production partners or that were at networks that were friendly and just kind of began to pitch it to get an idea. And it was interesting what I learned about the pitches as I was pitching it, where I stumbled, where, you know, as I was telling the story, I was like, wow, that's really complicated. Like I need to figure out a way to say that better or that isn't very well developed because it takes, you know, it, it's so convoluted or it just doesn't make sense. So really um, just kind of try test pitching things or even just discussing your idea. Like I'm not sure whether they should live on Mars or an asteroid or they just didn't say, you know, just kind of get people together that you trust um, to talk through your ideas. So now create the Bible. So what's a Bible used for? Um, it's used as a pitching tool. When you go in to pitch, never kind of just start reading from your Bible, because that's just the absolute pit, you know, kiss of death if you just start reading from your Bible. So never do that. Um, I think it's really, you know, you should be able to have it turned upside down facing whoever you're pitching, and you can flip through the pages and pitch, using it as kind of a guide so you don't forget what you're saying um, to kind of lead you through. So as you're designing it, you, could, you should also be thinking about what makes sense where for when you pitch it. So it's like a guide, it's a tool, it's your complete outline of your show. What is your show? This is my show, right? It's the, it's the whole package. Um, it should be, you know, PDF'd, it should be able to either be sent digitally or left behind, like printed really nicely and left behind. And whoever you pitch to, you should ask them whether they want to take it, whether they want to want that hard copy, or whether they want it emailed. Because people are just, you know, they're processing, especially at the big networks, they're processing like hundreds of these a year. And they all have a system. Like, for me, I like to have things hard copy because then I can keep it on my desk or in my bag and I know I have to read and respond. But other people, they don't want to carry around a ton of stuff. They want it emailed. So ask and do what they say, basically. Um, it's used, you know, to everybody you're pitching. 
but also at major markets. And kind of the big kid markets are kid screen, which happens in, uh, in New York in February. It almost always snows. Uh, MIP TV and MIPCOM are two big TV uh, markets that happen in Cannes, France. Um, MIP TV is usually April and uh, MIPCOM is October. And MIPCOM is bigger for kids and bigger for animation. Um, if you had to pick between those two, MIPCOM's bigger. And basically everyone in the world kind of shows up to these things and they all have the same, the Bibles are all the same the world over. They all fall into this rough kind of pattern that we're, we're going to talk about today. And because the whole world, the last one to this audience that kind of seems silly, has to be in good English and has to be good grammar. But a big reason for that is, is that, you know, it, it is becoming more and more and more of a global world. And you're going to have co-production partners or other people working on your shows that could be French, they could be German, they could be in Singapore. So you really, you know, it's like playing telephone. If it's not in really good, strong English to start with, it kind of gets stranger and stranger the more it gets translated and, and passed around. Um, frequently there are productions being done um, in multiple countries, none of which are, are uh, predominantly English speaking territories and everybody on the crew is speaking English. So, um, so really has to go, and just, just for you guys too, like pitching here in Los Angeles, New York, you know, you want it to be really put together and really nicely presented. This is you presenting yourself to the creative community as a creative person, and like it's a representation of how much care you're gonna put into something, how professional you are, so really, Read and reread it. Make sure things are spelled correctly. You know, of course, you might have a, a situation where you have a lot of ellipses or something to show an emotion, but just don't don't put them. You know, don't use them wildly for no reason. So, and and the other thing is too, is you know, you want a person to really be involved in your story and reading it and just thinking about the characters and what could happen and not thinking like, oh, that's not, is that how you spell that word? That's weird, I don't think, you know, it takes, takes people out. So what we're gonna do is we're basically gonna go through each of the parts and talk about, um, uh, you know, what are the really key things to put in each section. So all in all, when you get to the end of this whole big process, you're only looking about 10 pages, right? I mean, it might be longer or shorter, depending how much art you have, but you're really only looking at 10 pages and you want it to look like really like it's gonna be a fun, easy read. If you're, you know, if some people come in a like, you know, single space typewritten kind of like 50 page tombs and I can tell you that that's gonna go to whoever's the lowest person on the departmental uh, totem pole, that's who's gonna get to read that. So it's not really the person you want reading it and it just, it doesn't look fun, it doesn't look interesting, it's gonna sit around the offices for a heck of a long time before you know somebody reads it and gets back to you. So just really think about when you're designing it, how can you break it up, use white space, just make it look like this isn't gonna be painful, right? So the first, um, the first piece is the overview, you know, one, one and a half pages long. Um, and all of these, I'll say, like that's one, one and a half pages long written. It might turn out to be two pages once you have your art, you know, however you, you divide it up. Um, really start with a log line. I'm a really big fan of, if you can't say in a log line what your show is, then, um, then you don't yet quite know what your show is. So always start with a log line. One, th everybody know what a log line is? Yes, no, no, right, yeah, no, mm -hmm. yeah, okay. It is, um, we'll go back to Camp Laszlo, uh, three little campers in endless summer camp. The adventures of three little campers in an endless summer camp, right? Um, you know, follow Sparky, Raz, and Jorge, three aliens hiding out on Earth inside a teenage boy robot, 
right? Like that's your low log line. So, um, so always start with your log line because these people are reading tons and tons and tons of these, right? And they have no idea what they're walking into. So just lay it out there. This is the story of so-and-so as she discovers blank on the mysterious planet of yada yada. Just lay it out. It helps ground the person who's coming to, to this project, you know, for the first time, your project. Um, I think another reason why it's so important, the overview, to really be clear and concise is it's just because it's animation. Like, just think of the rules of animation. Like, you can have a world where all the animals talk to each other and talk to a human being. It could be a world where a person can only talk to one dog, their pet dog. It can be a world where all the animals talk to each other, but not to the person. Like, this is all, like, general groundwork that you have to put in this overview. So people know where they're starting. Um, the number one, number one, number one biggest problem with this is the fourth point. I'm going to jump ahead to the fourth point, which is starting in the middle. And that is the kiss of death, another kiss of death, is um, starting in the middle. And I totally know why people do it, because you've been living with it for so long in your head or you know, thinking about it, talking about it, drawing these characters that you know them so well that you're bored of the really simple basic stuff, right? So you don't start there. You start in the middle where it's interesting, but you have to start at the beginning. These are people that know nothing, know nothing. So what are the rules of your world? What's the tone of the world? Is it comedy? Is it action adventure? Kind of allude to, you know, introduce overview, introduce the characters, allude to different kinds of storylines that could go on, get across, um, you know, the, the kind of tone, world, what can happen in this world and what cannot happen in this world. So it's really just a, a one and a half page 101. This is what my show is about. And you have to like almost like erase your mind and say like, okay, this is somebody that's gonna read this. Maybe, you know, on a reading day where they've read 25 of these in a row. So really start at the beginning. If there's anything I can stress, start at the beginning. And on my last Bibles, I completely did not do that. I was completely guilty because I, I put it all together and went to one of my first pitches and they said, how long are the episodes? Are these 11 minute episodes or 22 minute episodes? And it was like, oh, of, of course, they're 22 minute episodes, but I didn't write it in there. So how long are the episodes? Is it a comedy? Is it a comedy action show or is it action with comedy? Really lay it out, start at the beginning. So, all right, any questions on that? I think you could do that. I mean, if you're writing a script or something and you want to kind of start, like, for instance, um, I just watched, uh, I, as I guess almost everybody in this room is, Walking Dead, right? And it starts with him, like, he's already is up. He knows what these uh, zombies are about. He, you know, it's not him starting with him waking up at the hospital. I think if it's like a, a dramatic thing like that, then absolutely or if you're gonna design your Bible so that maybe the first paragraph you kind of start in the middle, if it's like a, a mysterious action adventure thing where you have um, a character maybe coming into a world that's post-apocalyptic or something and you wanna start to, to draw the reader in, that's fine, but your second or third paragraph had better be what the overall show is gonna be to really ground your person in like, like this, this is basically a tool to get somebody to say, I can see this on TV. I'm gonna, I'm gonna option this. I'm gonna buy this. I'm gonna invest some money. 
So you kind of can't be so elusive about what it is because that development executive has to know what they're buying to, to want to put money out or want to go to their boss and say, hey, I think this is pretty cool. Like, we should do something with this. So it has to be a complete package about what they're buying. And I think sometimes people try to be a bit too clever and elusive and like, it's gonna be hilarious. You're like, okay, it might be, but what are the concrete examples? What is so hilarious so that I can, you know, pay money to option it or go to my boss and not look like an idiot, basically, you know, because, <laughs> um, because, and that's another thing, another reason why your Bibles just need to be like good English, solid, because whoever you're pitching it to has to turn around and show it to their boss. And then their boss has to go like to marketing, like, oh, what are you guys working on? You know, they're gonna pass it to marketing, it's gonna go to on air. These things get passed around internally. So, you know, so it has to be really professional. So, yeah. No, and I think, oh, I have to repeat the question. Um, okay, so if you have um, this, um, let me see if I got it right. So you have an idea, you go in, you pitch it. It's not quite right. They say no. You make changes and then you go back. Yes, yes. yeah, you can do that. You can absolutely do that. And sometimes, um, I mean, quite frequently, I would say, if you go pitch, you get good feedback. If you really listen to that feedback, people are open to rehearing it if it's significantly changed. You know, if you just push it like a, a millimeter each time, sooner or later people are gonna be like, ugh, go away. You know, you're not changing it enough, but if you're really working it and reworking it, yeah, that can be a very positive thing. And that's another reason why you just want, you know, just going back to like professional, well done, really well presented, because you're always selling yourself as a creative person and as someone who's clever, you know, interesting, artistic, that, that's a problem solver. Because maybe right now this is the 28th dog thing, you know, that they've seen pitched that month. They have enough dogs. They have four dogs in development already. But maybe a year from now all those dog projects get passed on and it's like, oh, there was that one dog thing. Yeah, yeah, by that guy, that was cool. Let's bring it back in. And that frequently happens, you know, you'll hear like, oh, this network, they have all animals. They don't want any more animals. They just want people shows. And then six months later, you know, <laughs> then it's like, oh, they're done. They want all animal shows. So you just always want to um, present yourself as a creative person, somebody, even if they, maybe you don't want that idea, they might want you, oh, but those designs are cool, I could use you on this. So, you know, and a no is not necessarily a bad thing, it's just like, uh, it doesn't work for us right now. And you never know what's going on behind the scenes, why it doesn't work for them right now, or what's gonna change. You know, all you need is some boss to come in and say, we have too many animals, I want people. And then like, it's like, right, people, we're on it, you know? So it changes like that over overnight. Okay, so you've kind of done your overview, right? You've set your stage. This is the stage th that we're playing in. It's a comedy. These are roughly the characters. These are roughly the stories that are gonna go on. You've said about the tone, how long the episodes are, how many you're thinking. You've done all of that. Now you go into character descriptions, right? So your character descriptions are gonna be probably an image of your character and one really good paragraph, solid paragraph about who that character is, okay? Um, one thing is, is that people tend to go on just strings of adjectives, which is really boring and really doesn't tell you much. So be imaginative about how you're gonna explain who that character is. Um, for instance, there was um, 
Bernard Derryman, um, Australian uh, guy. He's great. He did um, a bunch of web cartoons like Argent Poopy and stuff like that. You might know, but he had a great greedy kid. He had one of his characters was a really kind of fat, greedy kid. And um, I can't remember his name, but the first line was something like, Nelson's always up for a good feed. And you're like, all right, I'll read more about this Nelson, you know? So, so there's ways to kind of bring people in and not just like, oh, he's greedy and he's not very good on the playground, blah, blah, boring, boring. Give us examples. Like, it's, it's only gonna be funny because we're watching this character act. So what are things that he's gonna be doing? Give examples of action in your character descriptions. That's really gonna be uh, a lot more helpful. Another great example was um, the, the Krause brothers. They had a, a project in development. It was one of my, my favorites. And it was a, a picture of this really preppy, sweet little squirrel girl. Adorable big bow in her hair and little, little, you know, saddle shoes and check shirt and everything. Very cute and little skirt. And um, the first line was, Mary is disgusting. You're know, like, so cute, and she's disgusting? Okay, I want to know more about this character. I'm reading about this character. And basically, she was a character that would use that really sweet kind of look. And she would use it to like lead people in and then like turn things and play jokes on people. She was really a, a fun, good character. And you could just see that in that drawing and then his, dis his description where he gave you examples of what she would do in different situations. Um, I've also seen things where it's been like, um, you know, there are a group of animal operatives and the whole Bible's kind of put together almost like an, an FBI dossier on the different animals and each, each page is kind of almost like a, a breakdown about each character like that. So there's ways to be kind of clever to, and not just strings of adjectives. You know, one example of how they're gonna act is better than a thousand adjectives. So, I always think, do we know characters like these? Like, it's the smart girl, and she reads, it's, and she wears glasses. Um, it's the boy who loves gadgets. Like, okay, we've seen those characters. What is it? What are the twists you can make on these characters that make them characters we haven't seen before? So, he's a jock, and he's a bully, but he's a bully because he thinks he should be a bully. He doesn't really want to be, you know, he has a dad, he makes him play football, he doesn't really want to do that. He wants to, um, you know, he wishes instead he could, um, uh, I got it, thanks. Um, he wants it and says, sorry, they're like flashing minutes at me. Like, um, um, you know, he wants instead to, um, to art, to do art and paint. So that's an interesting bully we haven't seen before. So always twist your characters, always test them, always make sure they're not, they're not things we've seen before. Um, I always like to think about Bugs Bunny, like he's such a complex character really, like he's hilarious, he's so funny. You, want, you like to watch him, but you wouldn't necessarily want to be his friend because he'd get you in like a hell of a lot of trouble, right? Like immediately, you'd be sold out. It's not kind of shifty. So that he's a great character though, because you'll watch him and you wonder what he's gonna do. And so just always keep that in mind. And also be selective. In your Bible, you're really only gonna talk about your main characters. You know, it isn't your villain from episode 11. It, it's about the five guys we're gonna see every single episode, right? So that's who we wanna see. Episode springboards, these are probably one of the most important, important, important pieces of the Bible. I would say most Bibles are, are made or broken right here in this because you've laid out your world, you've, you've populated it with really cool, interesting characters, and now this is your part where you get to pull it all together and, and show us beginning, middle, and end, how, why is this gonna be so funny? Or why is this gonna be so action-packed? Or, you know, like I said, with the overview, you, you kind of make the, make the stage 
with your character descriptions, you populate the stage. Who's going to be on that stage? Who's going to be in those episodes every single, every single episode, every single week? And now this is your chance to really pay it off. Um, there was one, um, one year, for some reason, um, this was the pitch. Um, everybody got it, I think, 28 times in about four months. And the pitch was, um, aliens crash land on Earth. Um, they are here because they've been sent, because they're supposed to take over the Earth. Instead, they get here, they decide it's super cool, and instead, they just hang out, um, usually with a group of kids, and just learn cool things about Earth and, and party and have a great time. So different versions of that pitch, 28 times in one summer. I don't know why, it was just the, the pitch of the summer. Um, weird, but there was, so you see it 28 times. There was one that I optioned when I was, was at Cartoon Network. And it was because the characters were so clever and the way that they used that situation together with the personalities of those characters and wrap them into episodes, it was hilarious. It was funny. It was so unexpected and interesting. So this can really make an idea that's like oh, a bunch of kids in a neighborhood. All right, we've seen that cartoon, right? Like 10 different times. But what is it about those characters, their characteristics, their personality traits, and how they motivate action in storylines. So this is your chance to pay that off. Um, like I said, beginning, middle, and end, don't end ever with like, what will happen when? Gosh, will they make it? I don't know, and people aren't going to pay money to figure it out. <laughs> you know, you need to, to prove, like, uh, beginning, middle, and end. Here are the characters. Here are their personality traits that get them in trouble. Here are their personality traits that get them out of trouble. And it's playing out in a unique, different way that the reader didn't see and that's why it's going to be interesting, clever, and why they are going to pay money to option you know, your Bible and move forward with development. So use all your characters. You have your main characters in your Bible, right? You said these are the most important guys. These are the guys I think are going to be in every episode. When you start doing your, your springboards, it's, it's a really good test because you're going to begin to see wow, this pesky little sister, she actually drives the action in almost every single episode. So actually, is this her show and not the older brother's show like I thought? Or I thought we were going to need that pesky little sister, and actually she's not in any episodes. So you either have to change their personalities or their characteristics or rethink who is important or who is not important in your show. So it's kind of a really good test to begin to figure out um, how valuable your characters are and if you've given them enough kind of prickles in their characteristics, in their personalities, to work off of each other and really drive story. It's all character driven. It is all character driven. You know, when Madame Foster leaves the house and says to Blue, no parties, you're only going to watch because you know he is immediately going to have a party because that's his personality, right? So, um, so just always go back to their personality, their traits, and how that's going to drive story and make sure that these, these episode springboards are really driven out of I have been told I cannot drink Coca-Cola, but I want to drink Coca-Cola. I am now going to do everything I can to get a Coke because that's my personality. Or are you dealing with a character that's like, oh, I'm told I'm not supposed to drink Coke. Okay, I'm not going to do it. So that's the good kid, not so interesting to watch as the bad kid. You know what I mean? So it's all character driven. So yeah. How 
how many uh, characters in a main cast is the question. You know, I think you're going to need, um, I think on average, five. But I don't know what is your show. You know, is it you only have three main characters, but they're in a, a camp situation where there's a lot of back characters? I don't think there's any three characters, five characters, ten characters. But watch if you suddenly have a cast of a thousand. If you suddenly have like five main characters and it's an 11 minute cartoon, just think of how much business you're gonna have to kind of navigate. Getting like, where are they? What are they doing? You know? So if it's like three main characters and then other, other characters in the background, and you can have kind of a paragraph to explaining. These are the three main characters, but we're going to have other, other kind of different campers or different cabins or you know different characters in the background. You can explain that in very brief little paragraphs. So like you know, example, yeah, the yeah. Yeah, like think about The Simpsons, right? You would have the family, but then on the second page, you could have um, of just character breakdowns. You'd have, although as the series unfolds, we're going to meet a cast of characters around town, like Apu, who runs the Quickie Mart, and so and so, Principal Skinner, and so and so, and just give a few like flavors so you get an idea, but don't go on and on and on with, you know, thousands. Okay, they're telling me I have to cut. So, Last page, art has to be awesome because everybody is used to looking at great art, right? So if your art isn't great, um, it just like undermines that whole professionalism thing. So, and really if it's a comedy, I mean, you know this, right? If it's a comedy, it has to look funny, it has to be com comedic art. If it's action adventure, it should portray that. Um, I like, and I am, I am, I'm going super quick. I'm going to go. Okay, so uh, per section, so you should say on your main page, you know, um, like your main cast on your opening page. Um, you should have your each drawing of each of your characters. And then I like to see in the springboard section um, your um, kind of tableaus, kind of depictions what's the funniest moment from each of your uh, episode ideas. You don't have to have a picture per uh, five to seven. If you put five to seven springboards in there, you don't need five to seven pieces of art, maybe three that show it, okay? And just some parting thoughts. Do think cross-platform, everything's going there. Um, don't assume more is better. Don't do like a trailer or here's more sketches. You know, less is more. Less is more. It has to be really high quality to include it. Don't include budgets, marketing, l and If you're pitching Nickelodeon, they know how to do that. So don't worry about it. Um, and have a personality. That goes back to that. Like, you know, if it's a group of crime-fighting animals, maybe you could do it as like an FBI dossier or something like that clever if you want to. So this is the outline, but you don't have to stick to it. I know there's other questions, but you're going to tell me to go somewhere else to the shop talk. to shop talk, and I will be there to answer questions because I have to go right. Okay, thank you very much. Sorry. <laughs>